Hey, welcome back to Rob's Garage Woodworking. Today we are going to do a little bit of maintenance on my Murray snowblower. And this one has a Briggs & Stratton uh, 205 cubic centimeter or 8 horsepower motor on it. And we're going to do an oil change and a spark plug change on it today. And uh, just show you how quick and easy that is. Alright, All right, so your snowblower will come with two manuals. It'll come with an engine manual and it'll come with a snowblower manual. So since we're going to work on the engine, uh, we need the engine manual. So to figure out what model engine you have, it won't tell you on the engine. It will give you a size in cubic centimeters and it'll give you a horsepower rating. And then what you do is you look up on your engine specifications. I don't know if you can really see that here. But it gives you the model. It's 1200. It's this one and that one's 205 cc's and it's 8 horsepower so that gives you the oil capacity and then it tells you so for the 1200 to 5, uh, 1500 engine you have your spark plug gap, your spark plug torque and then it gives you some other specs which you're not going to get into it gives you your fuel additive that you're supposed to use uh, your spark plug that you're supposed to use and the type of oil, okay? Okay. So they give you a spark plug number. This one is 491055. That's the Briggs and Stratton part number for it. But you're not going to get Briggs and Stratton spark plugs unless you go to like a dealer or something. So you look up an equivalent and you can go online and look up spark plug equivalents and it'll give you plug numbers for different brands. So I got Champion uh, RC12YC is the equivalent for that plug okay now fuel additive basically any small engine that you have you should use fuel stabilizer it keeps your gas from breaking down there's additives in your gasoline that can break down and then it will gum up your carburetor so I should tell you the angry Mike story uh, <laughs> at the end of the video I'll try to remember to tell you the angry Mike story because it's funny so use your fuel stabilizer on all your small engines okay because your gas is going to sit there for a long time it's going to sit in the engine for a long time it's going to sit in the can for a long time so it'll break down now the next thing is they specify a 5w30 oil and they specify a synthetic now you don't really need to use synthetic if you want to buy synthetic that's great it is a better oil now do you need it no you don't really need it what you have to do is just change your oil that's what all you really have to do. You can keep these uh, you can keep these machines for a good long time if you do a little bit of maintenance to them. So today, oil spark plugs. Okay. So like I say, there's actually no model number on these, but it tells you that it's a 205 cc and that it's eight horsepower. Okay. So. It's a Briggs & Stratton 800 Snow Series, and that's all it really says. So then what you do is you take that number, you cross-reference it on your manual. Here's the manual. And then you find out that it's 205 cc's, right? And then that gives you your model number, your 12,000. 120,000. <laughs> All right, it is brutally cold out. I'm going to put on the choke, make sure the key's in, give this pump a couple of shots there, turn it on. So we're going to let that sit outside and warm up. All right, so this tube that sticks out here, that's your oil drain tube. Make sure you've got your oil pan underneath. Okay. Put your socket on, your ratchet on, loosen. Loosen that up. Okay. The oil will drain out. And once that's drained out, put your cap back on. And tighten it back up a little bit. 
not too tight, but you want it so nothing drips out. All right, so what I did was I put some bricks under the front of the snow blower, and that put the whole snow blower on an angle so that the oil would drain out better. All right, so it says it will take um, about half of a liter, so half of one of these bottles. So we're gonna start pouring this in. So, take your dipstick, clean your dipstick off, and then on the dipstick, right here it says add and full. So up at the top, when it's on that knurled area there, that's perfect. So you wanna get it about halfway up, maybe closer to the top, not all the way, because the oil will heat up. Okay. And when you put that in, you have to screw it all the way in to get the right reading. So once it's all the way in, unscrew it. Take it out. See where you are. Now we have to add some more, it looks like. We didn't get any on the knurl yet. Okay, so it's hard to see, but it looks like it's registering here about halfway up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it and... Um, and then I'll check it after I run it for a little bit and make sure that it's good. So you've got your equivalent spark plug. The one that you have in here was the 491-055. Look that up. I did cross-reference on that on the internet and I came up with a Champion RC12YC. So we're gonna check the gap on that and before we do that, I'm just going to show you, we've got a spark plug socket that we're going to use here. And the socket has rubber inside, which is the same size as the insulator. Okay, that slides over top and right over top of your hex drive part of the spark plug. And it slides right over top and then there's right down to the shoulder here. And then this is your gasket, which is like the washer. And it's like a crush gasket and it's kind of neat. And then you have inside, what you want to do is you want to check your spark and your spark plug gap is 0 0.030 here. So here's your spark plug. And inside here, the little tip there, that's your electrode. And then this part that curves over the top, that's your ground electrode apparently. So let's find 030, which is this guy right here and this rusty old one that I have. So it's got to slide right through, and it's just got to have enough clearance for that to go through. No more, no less. So you don't want to have any more of a gap than that, and you don't want to have it so that it's too tight that it doesn't fit in. Okay, so this one's perfect. Make sure that it's on straight, that it's not twisted off to one side. Okay, like if you drop one of these, they can be kind of crappy. So then you've got to bend it straight. Sometimes they have these little divots here and you can use those to adjust but it's easy with pair of pliers too actually you don't want to mess it up too much though so try to be gentle on it and don't uh, create a lot of marks on it all right so we're going to use that we've gapped it we're going to take the old one out put this one in so keep that one safe it's that direction so you grab this, you can pop it up with a screwdriver from underneath or just with your hands, just pull it straight up. Set that over here. You gotta take off these plastic wing nuts. So unscrew those. Well, let's see here. All right, well. That one's tight, 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 but it's not broken, so not yet anyway. Goes <laughs> out, set them somewhere where they're not going to get lost. I think we got to pull the key out. And then this, I'm just kind of slide this backwards. Off of that. There we go. Once that's out. And, lo and behold, okay, 
it's kind of in the way. All right, so this guy right here, it's really difficult. So what I did was I just grabbed it and slowly worked it back and forth, back and forth while pulling it up and I got it to come undone. And you can't really see it with the different camera angles, but that's what I did. So yeah, work it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until eventually it came out. So get this cover out of the way, get this out of the way. And here's where your spark plug is. And that's probably still warm. And it is. And hope for the best here. Oh yeah. Nice. I'll take these guys out. So that over here. So it doesn't get lost. Move this cap so that doesn't get lost. Well, I think I could take this whole exhaust off. That's a different size. Seven back. Make sure the T30 is. Oh man. That's like right in the way, too. Hope for the best. Okay. That one's coming off. I don't like the way that's angled. Oh, but it's coming off. There we go. All right. Wow. Well then, suddenly it got a lot easier to get in here. So now that we have space to get the plug out, still not easy to get it out. Ah, there we go. So, that one is out. Now we gotta pull the spark plug out. Let's get this out of the way here. Let's just tuck that down. Out of the way. Socket. Make sure it's on loosen. And pull that right over the socket, right over the plug. Loosen that off. And you just take it right out. Okay. So here's the used plug. It doesn't look terrible. Um, so just hand start that. And basically, you're just compressing the gasket. There's a torque spec on this. It's in the manual. Oops. I'm just going to go to that compresses nicely. And that's that. That's in. And then we're going to put this cap back on and that has got to go all the way down you'll you'll hear it click and you'll feel it click so put that in all the way that's good now go backwards with this stuff put this back in All right, so that's in nice and tight. Not too much. Now this piece goes back in here. I have this cover that goes over top. Oh, oh, oh no, drive it. Don't be dropping that. These ones are really just gently tightened in there. There's not much in there at all. I'm going to put this plug back in. That's your key. And you just got to push that on all the way until it clicks. And then this one just kind of fits underneath. And over top here. All right. So because these ones were really rusty, I'm going to put just a little tiny bit of anti-seize compound on each one.
All right. Oh, here we are. There we go. <laughs> it looks backwards because the pointer is back here and not up here. <laughs> Alright, so let's uh, move everything out of the way and try and see if we can fire it up. See if we Alright, so the angry mic story. So a couple of doors down for me at our old subdivision, there's this one guy who had problems with everybody and everything. He would have, the cops would pull him over because he'd drive too slow. Uh, he'd argue with all the neighbors about the fences, about how they did everything, what was on their lawn, you know, how they clean their driveway, everything, right? This guy was trouble all the time. So anyway, he's got the exact same snowblower that I have and I use the fuel stabilizer thanks to my one friend that put me on to it, right? And, uh, you know, I've never looked back and it's been great. So that snowblower has an electric start. So, so once your carburetor gets gummed up, it doesn't really work properly and it won't start and it won't run right. So anyway, Angry Mike is down the street and I can hear him in his garage. He's got the thing plugged in, he's hitting the start button and it's going over and over and over and over, nothing's happening. And then, you know, you can hear him swearing a bit. And then, again, start over, 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 turns over, nothing happens. And then he sits there and he presses it and he holds it for a good long time, probably for a full minute. And he's got this thing going and going and going and all of a sudden, bang! <laughs> and you can hear this, this scream and this, ah, and, you know, all this swearing and everything and... It just was so loud. He was so angry. It's like, well, what did you expect to happen? You blew up your carburetor. <laughs> what did you expect? You're just going to pump gas into this thing and, you know, nothing's going to happen or it's just going to fire up. Well, it fired up all right. It fired up all over the garage, I think. <laughs> so then, you know, we had to rent a trailer and, uh, you know, take it into somebody and uh, get it fixed right because he didn't do anything himself but <sighs> it was just so funny it was karma really like <laughs> anyway so yeah take care of it use your your fuel stabilizer um you know change your spark plug change your oil and uh you know life will be easy anyway thanks for watching cheers